just working on tacking the V-band flanges on this and add a blowout. Mistakes happen. Gets the best of us. Hi everybody, how are you? My name is Dan Dulak and welcome to my channel where I am documenting my V10 powered Ultima Evolution convertible build. This is episode number 25. If you missed any of the previous 24 episodes, go check those out. I cover from delivery day all the way up to where we are today. And on this episode, we're gonna finish building and fabricating the remainder of the exhaust system for this V10 engine. And as you can see, over my shoulder, I've actually got the rear clam fitted. We got some fitting issues we gotta take care of to get that thing to close over that power plant. So, a lot of exciting things to do. Let's get to work. All right, let's get started on fabricating the rest of the exhaust system. So I have mocked up here. I have a short elbow taped to my short high flow 200 cell catalytic converter. Same on the other side. This is about the angle I'm looking at coming back because what I'm gonna do is a, is a crossover X pipe right here in the middle. Join those two together before exiting out the rear. I've just got some one inch steel stock here just to hold this up off from the frame. Just about one inch. I've got uh, some hoses I'm gonna have to clear. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is up off the frame. Here is the X pipe that I'm gonna make. These are a couple 90 degree elbows. I think these are four inch center line radius. I've already created the profile that I need to cut to scallop out these so that I can then weld them together there. Now, I don't have the right bandsaw to cut to scallop this out perfectly straight. This requires a fairly good bandsaw with a setup so it doesn't skip. I'm just gonna use the cutoff wheel here to cut these out. And the way I made the template, this is the template I use. I just put this, this template here and then just trace around it and away we go. So I made a couple different sizes. Uh, I think this is like 25% of the tube cut and this one's like a 30%. I think I'll go with the 30% on this. Used Fusion 360. This is just a 3D printed template. Used, uh, I modeled up uh, a uh, 90 degree tube, uh, Fusion 360 and got the profile I needed and then printed out this template that I'll use. I'll trace onto here, cut this out with the cutoff wheel. Hopefully they match up good enough and then I can weld those together. I've got some tight radius elbows here. These are three inch CLR tight radius so that when I come out over here, I'll be able to come down and then out the rear. So that's the setup. That's what I'm thinking of doing. So let's get started on this. I got these pipes all cut, ground, sanded down, and the fit up is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So these two scallops come together like that. There's a little bit of a gap down here at the back end. The front end is closed up, but given this is in the crotch, I'll be able to fill that with some uh, filler metal. Not a big deal. Let's see inside. Fit up is pretty good. So I get two hands on it, clamp it together there, and close that gap as well. So. Pretty happy with that. Let's uh, get this tacked 
And we'll be done with that piece. Few moments later. I got this tacked up off camera and uh, fit up. Fit up is pretty good. So I made a few tacks. Of course, I'm gonna back purge this uh, as well once I do the finish weld. But uh, inside, you can see the fit up is, is pretty darn good. So this is gonna come over here and Ouch, it's still a little hot. It's gonna go something like this. So it's gonna made up something like that. Cross over and then out the back. So let's keep going. I've been plugging away at this exhaust. I think I've got all the pieces and parts cut, ready to go. I've even got a few pieces tacked in as you saw. So anyway, let me show you what I got here. All right, here we have it. So I managed to make the pieces for, connect the catalytic converter over to the crossover or the X-pipe. And I ended up having to use, I got actually a single 180 piece bend and there's a slight, call it 20 degree bend here. So this comes up about a 20 degree angle and then this levels out. So there's a slight bend here in this one. Same on the other side as well. So these are just resting in place. I actually used my uh, pipe expander. Same tool I used when I expanded the pipes for my collectors. If you remember back a few many episodes ago I had to expand these a little bit more just to slide the runners in. So I actually use that here so that I could slide the tubes and give me a little bit of, of uh, length, additional wiggle room on length, as well as a little bit of adjustability there. So what I'll then do is just weld up the seam here, but makes assembly and I don't have to be exact with st straight butt weld cut with this, with this uh, inlet flange. So came out pretty good. Not quite centered. So you can see I've got a center line on the chassis marked there, and I'm off to the right, maybe about a half an inch, which isn't bad. I can make up for that when I come down here to make sure the exit out the rear is exactly centered. So that shouldn't be that big a deal. In fact, I might even still be able to wiggle this a bit to get it lined up better. So I think I can make that work, get that centered perfect. Got my elbow tacked down here to the high flow catalytic converter. That looks good. I think I'm ready now. I'm gonna cut a couple of 45 pieces so that this will come straight back. And then I'm gonna go down behind the transmission mount here and then straight out the, out the rear of the car. But I think what I'm gonna have to do is put the clam on, the rear clam I've got sitting over here. I'm gonna put that on the car so that I could figure out A, if I've got enough room behind the transmission and I think I do, and then that'll help me line up the exit uh, as well. So this went pretty quick. I'm pretty happy with this, and uh, we're gonna keep it going. As you saw, I was just working on tacking these V-band connectors here, the V-band flanges on this and add a blowout. So this tube 
is 050. It's super thin um, and wasn't paying attention, got too hot and blow out. It's not a big deal. I can, I can patch that because given it's right on the weld seam. So shouldn't be a big deal. I'll grind out the inside uh, carefully, carefully patch that hole. But uh, mistakes happen. It's the best of us. So anyway, we'll deal with it. Keep going. By the way, a little tip here, as you're welding and as soon as you see the metal start to get away from you, you see it start to fisheye out and blow out, just stop. Don't try to catch up to it. Just stop dead in your tracks. Let it cool and uh, reassess and get back after it. So what I'll do is, uh, this is already cool. You want to let this cool so that you're not working on hot metal so you can go in and patch it very, very carefully. All right, now that I've got the exhaust system kind of tacked and taped into place, what I'm gonna do is work on the rear clamshell, the rear body here, to make sure I've got enough clearance. I don't know how far I can come out here before making the bend and going out the rear. Plus, I need to figure out where exactly the exit is going to go. Um, transmission mount here, by the way, I'm reusing the original OEM transition mount rubber isolator that's down here made up way back I think in episode two or three where I was on the CNC plasma table I cut out this transmission bracket and then welded up some posts with some gussets and then triangulated it down this is where Ultima the factory puts for transmission mount so it's a through hole through the chassis I've got it triangulated here so most of the load bearing weight is right on this chassis point and these these uprights are more just to, to kind of stabilize it left to right or twisting motion so anyways uh, with this mocked up let's get that rear clamshell in place i'm gonna have to do some trimming to get it to close over this uh, intake plenum here it's going to be a tight fit so i'm gonna have to trim some of the fiberglass there to get it to close but it is going to interfere kind of on the throttle body on this side and I think on the side of the intake plenum here. So I'll get it close. I'm not gonna do too much body work on that now, just enough to get it closed as best I can so I can fit up and measure up the rear exit for this exhaust. And I've got something cool planned that I'll show you here momentarily. Rear clam is back on the car, doing some fitment checks for the exhaust system. So a couple of things I did here, I got the uh, basically the center line of this exit all marked out with tape. So I know exactly where I want the uh, exhaust to exit. So that's all set. Definitely have a couple of fitment issues I didn't that I just discovered that I didn't know I had. One is the exhaust collector here actually interferes with the splash guard this kind of inner fender splash guard and you can see where I've I've marked out where I think I'm gonna have to cut it just kind of cut this out and then I can refiberglass close that in there's plenty of space between the edge of the inner tire in this fender well so that won't be a big deal um, so when we close this First place this touches is right on that, on that header. So I need to trim it out anyway, give some clearance. And the next place it interferes that I already knew about is right there on the intake plenum. So the thing to keep in mind when this thing comes, when this clam comes down, it also goes forward a fair bit. So I don't think I'm gonna have to cut too much of this off to get this to clear. Um, I don't know, maybe a foot here, back. So again, this will, this will give it enough room to come down. Now the next area of clearance is going to be in the throttle body area. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. 
So right in there, not even closed and that throttle body looks like it's gonna hit already. So that's gonna be another clearance area that I'm gonna have to make. And then on the other side, on the passenger side, no issues with the inner fender. So you can see here, inner fender clears the exhaust header by about an inch or so. And as far as the intake plenum goes, you can also see up there, there's gonna be, there's gonna be some clearance issues going on there. I think if I just make a couple of relief cuts um, so the engine sticks out of the clam a little bit, I think that will work. Again, I don't know yet. I'm gonna take it one piece at a time, one step at a time, um, but I might have some exposed engine out the top side of this clam, which might be pretty cool to get this thing to, uh, to close. So pretty, pretty exciting. So next up, we're going to finish mocking up the rest of this exhaust system. So you can see in there, I've got the V-band clamp flanges all ready to go. Got to drop it down and then it's going to come kind of straight out, straight out the back here. So that will be pretty sweet. So let me show you what I'm thinking as well. I've already mocked up the two three inch CLR center line radius, 90 degrees opposing each other to drop the exhaust down. So this will top side here, this is where the V-band flange will get welded on. And then this is where it will start to exit out the rear of the car. And what I'm gonna do is, I've got these uh, expander flanges. So this goes three inch to three and a half inch. And then the tailpipe itself on this side, I've got some three and a half inch stainless. Be about six inches of it that comes out and that I weld onto this and then I'll cut maybe a 10 degree angle off from it um, to give it a nice angled look and a bigger, a bigger exit. That should be pretty cool. I'm pretty excited how that is gonna come together. Great progress, love seeing this body almost on. <laughs> Just completely changes the look of the car. Completely changes the look of the car, even though it doesn't close all the way. It looks, it's gonna look insane. I can't wait.